in your finances, in your marriage, relationships, if you hold fast to your confession, it will be what God said it would be. So, Father, we come today yes, Lord. to thank you for another day. Thank you for the opportunity to be free to worship and praise you, God. Thank you, Lord. With no hindrance, with no chains, God. We sacrifice and praise for you because you're great. You're so awesome. Now today, Father, this is a service, God, that we give totally over to you. I'm asking you to speak to our hearts, speak to every part of our being, like they call. Father, I pray that today that you would regenerate somebody, renew, refresh, yes, and restart somebody today, God. I come against every weight today. You say lay aside every weight. We throw it on you, God. Hallelujah. Because you said in your word, who the Son set free is free indeed. So today, God, we ask you, God, not for things, but we ask for you today. Yes, Lord. We ask that you would come in this building today, sanctify every part of this building, sanctify every person in this building. I pray that you would go over the airways and over the devices today, over the TV today. Touch somebody today, God. I pray for miracles and signs and wonders to follow your word. I pray for worship to be so intense to demons will begin to flee. Worship so intense to miracles and healing will go forth. Worship so intense to prodigal sons and prodigal daughters will come back home. I pray for worship help us to be seated in you, God. Yes, God. For I thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you. That I can call you anytime. Thank you, God. Thank you. While people are busy and doing things, you're never too busy to hear me. When I cry out, God, you hear me when I cry. And Father, I thank you. You're going to do just what you said you would do. You set your boundary to your word. If you said it, you said you would perform it. So today, God, we thank you today. We bless your name today. Let healing power go forth. Go to the hospitals today, God. Go to the streets. somebody you can show yourself strong in. Now, Father, I pray that we volunteer, God, use our hands, use our feet, use our mouth, use our gift yes, to bring glory and honor to you. Now, Father, those areas that we're struggling in, those areas that we have not conquered, Father, I pray that today, today Lord. yoke destroying anointing would come in this place. Destroy that yoke that stronghold, that generational curse, things that were said to us, we're acting out on what we somebody said. Yes, Lord. That thing that scarred us, God. You'll turn scars into stars. Let us shine, God, today. And Father, let us all know one thing, that we represent you. Yes, Lord. I don't represent a man, I represent you. Help me to represent you in the right way. Now, Father, we're getting ready to go on this air. There are hurting people. There are people who are confused right now. There's a mother don't know where her next meal is coming from. 
there's a father who's frustrated because he can't pay the bills this month. So, Father, I ask you right now in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Touch right now, God. Touch, Lord. Touch mirror barrels right now, God. Yes, Let the Father know he don't have to run from his house. He can stand right there and see you come through for him, God. Thank you. Bless right now, God. Yes, God. Bless right now. Yesterday, God, some mother is waking up without a husband. Some child is waking up without a parent this morning. Father, I pray that you would touch right now. Yes, Lord. Touch the young girls, those three young girls that stood here on yesterday talking about their father. Touch them right now, God. Yes, Lord. As they wake up this morning without a father, bless today, God. Bless today, God. Bless today. God. Bless today. And then lastly, God, help us to see things the way you see it. Don't let me see through my emotions and my feelings, my hurt, my pain. Let me see it. Because, Father, I, I, I see the now, but you already see the end. So help me see it the way you see it, God. Let me see it from your vantage point, God. And, Father, reassure me that everything that I've gone through is working for my good. It's in the name that's above every name we pray. It's only one name where demons flee. It's only one name that every knee has to bow. It's only one name that heals bodies. It's only one name that gives peace. That name is Jesus. And that is we pray. Amen. Amen. Can we just give God a 30 second prayer?
amen, amen. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. We praise your name, God. All right. I am here to encourage you this morning. As we prepare with praise, worship, and the word of God. I just want to give you a little bit of encouragement. So I have a couple of scriptures. I'm going to give you a couple of versions of those scriptures. Just to give you a little pick-me-up for the rest of this week. So I'm coming to encourage you to remind you this morning that you can and you will. All right. So the first scripture I want to bring to you this morning is Philippians 4, 11 through 13. And I'm going to give you the King James Version first. It says, not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am, therefore be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to be abound. Everywhere and in every and all things, I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to be abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. That's one of your encouragements. I'm going to repeat that. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. Now, sometimes I need to break that down a little bit for me to understand some of the words from the King James Version. So I go to the Easy Reader Version. And it says, I am telling you this, but not because I need something. I have learned to be satisfied with what I have and with whatever happens. I know how to live when I am poor and when I am have plenty. I have learned the secret of how to live through all kinds of situations when I have enough to eat or when I am hungry, when I have everything I need or when I have nothing. Christ is the one who gives me the strength. I need to do whatever I must do. The next scripture that I want to share with you is Psalms 62, 5 through 8. King James Version says, My soul wait thou upon you, God, for my expectation is from him. He only is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. And God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of strength. And my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times. Yes. Ye people, pour out your heart before him. God is a refuge for us. Say that. I'm going to repeat that because that's your second encouragement on today. It says trust in him at all times. Ye people, pour out your heart before him. God is your refuge for us. Now, this is an easy re reader version. It says, I must calm down and turn to God. I'm going to repeat that because I need that this morning. It says, I must calm down and turn to God. He is my only hope. He is my rock. The only one who can save me. He is my high place of safety where no army can defeat me. My victory and my honor come from God. He is the mighty rock where I am saved. your trust in God. Tell him all your problems. God is our place of safety. Say that. So again, I want to encourage God's people today by simply reminding you, I can do, I can overcome, I can conquer, I can achieve. Let's just say whatever your can needs to be, do it trusting in him at all times. No matter what the outcome is, no matter what the season is, or the situation, remember I can and I will. Can you say that with me? Say I can, I can. and I will. I will. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give a little answer to the today. Somebody say calm down and turn to God.
this week will be a week for miracles. This week, come on now, this week will be.
to make all the petitions unto God. So get yourself prepared. Get your mind prepared. Get your heart prepared. Just to petition to God. Whatever your petition is. My petition this morning is for our children. My petition this morning is for the broken heart. My petition this morning is for those that their minds are not clear. My petition this morning is for the bereaved families. My petition this morning is for those sick. Dear Heavenly Father, we come here. We come, God, knowing, dear Heavenly Father, that everything that we may be weighing us down, God, that, Lord, our concerns, Lord God, you're concerned about those things, God. Sometimes we have to remind ourselves of God that we are never alone, God. So, Lord, we thank you right now, God. We thank you for being present in our lives, God. We thank you for never leaving us or forsaking us, God. We thank you, God, for never putting no more on us that we can bear, God. That's your promises to us, God. So we just say thank you, God. We thank you for your love, your grace, and your mercy, oh God, that's new each and every day, God. So Lord, we just come right now, God, we're praying for our children, oh God. Lord, the world is so attractive to them right now, God, but Lord, we know, God, that you are covering them, oh God. When they can be in our presence, oh God, we know, God, that you're in every place at all times. So Lord, we're just calling out our children, God. If you just call out their names, your children's names, call out your children's names. Because Lord God, we need you today to touch our children like never before, God. Lord, because the enemy has a way to make things so attractive to them, oh God. But Lord, we thank you right now, oh God, that everything that we have planted, every seed, every water, dear Heavenly Father, every piece of soil, dear Heavenly Father, that we have put into our children, oh God, that Lord God, that it will bear good fruit, oh God. I want to say that again, Father God. Thank you, God, for every seed, oh God, every water, every soil, every, all the soil that we have planted into our children, God. We thank you right now, God, that it will bear good fruit, God. Lord, but Lord, as we pray for our kids, give us peace, oh God. Give us peace, to Heavenly Father, to heaven, that your word says it will pass all understanding. We don't understand what their, their desires are, God. We don't understand what attracts them, oh God. We don't understand what they're doing, oh God. But Lord, you know everything and all things. And we thank you for the peace right now, God. We thank you for giving us rest at night, oh God, when we don't know where they are, oh God. We thank you right now, God, that when we feel like their minds are so caught up in this devilish world, God, we know, God, that you will give us the peace to understand those things that we cannot understand. So Lord, I petition for our kids, oh God, this morning. You know our hearts, oh God, for our kids. We love them unconditionally, God. We wouldn't be able to give our kids up like, oh God, that your father did. But God, we thank you right now, God. We're thanking you in advance right now, God, that you're fixing the things that are broken, oh God, in their lives. We're thanking you right now, God, that everything that has come to distract them, every detour, Heavenly Father, that you will line them up with your will and your purpose for their lives, oh God. Lord, I come to petition, oh God, for the brokenhearted, oh God. Lord, because you said that you are a heart fixer, oh God. Lord, I competition for the people that have minds are not right. Lord, you said you will be a mind regulator. So Lord, we thank you right now, God, for being a heart fixer and a mind regulator this morning, oh God. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that every person in our lives, every person that we have made contact with, whether it be family, whether it be friends, whether it be a, a stranger, God, we're praying right now for those people, God. We're interceding for them right now, God. That whatever they need, oh God, that you will be it, oh God. Wherever they're lacking, that you will fill it, oh God. Lord God, wherever they feel lonely, oh God, that you will make them feel like they are fulfilled in you, oh God. Because that's what we need, God. We need to be fulfilled in you, oh God. So Lord, we thank you right now, God. Lord, I'm petitioning for our bereaved families, Lord. There's so much lost in this year, oh God. But Lord, you never make a mistake. And Lord, you had already told us that, God, that we will have an expiration date. 
We didn't know when. We didn't know how. We didn't know what was going to happen. But God, you already told us that there will be an expiration. And God, because you already told us, we just need to prepare for it, okay? We need to prepare, prepare ourselves, oh God. Prepare us for what's to come, oh God. But Lord, I pray that you would touch the hearts of the bereaved families, oh God. Give them the strength that they need to keep pushing on, God. Give them the trust. They have the trust in you, oh God, that you will never make a mistake, oh God. Give them the strength, oh God. Give them the love that they need that's voided right now, oh God, with the lost, oh God. Lord, we pray for our children that have lost parents. We pray for parents that have lost children, oh God. We thank you right now for the strength that they will need, oh God. You will provide that for them, oh God. Because we're interceding, oh God. And you said that whatever we ask, it shall be given. Lord, God, we're knocking, oh God. We need you, oh God. We're knocking, oh God. We need you, oh God. Lord, we love you, God. We thank you, God. Lord, we love you, oh God. There's nobody like you, oh God. Nobody like you, oh God. And we bless your holy name this morning. We bless your name, God. So again, Lord God, we're going to petition for our children. We're petitioning for the broken heart, oh God. We're petitioning for the mind to have that, that need to be regulated. And God, we're petitioning for the bereaved families, oh God. And we're knowing that whatever we come to you, whatever's concerning us, it concerns you, oh God. And because it concerns you, we don't have to worry. And we don't have to even wait on it because it's already done in Jesus' name. Lord, we bless your name, God, as we go forth in worship and praise and in the word this morning, God. We pray that you touch the man of God that's bringing this word, oh God. Lord, get down inside of him, oh God, that whatever you have in this bed, that it shall come out, Lord God, just as you have desired it to be, oh God. Give us a good word, a word that's going to carry us through, God. We bless your name, God. We bless your name, God. We love you, God. We love you forever, God. In the mighty and majestic name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. We bless your name, Jesus. We're going to love you forever. Oh, Lord God, we thank you, Jesus. Hey, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lord, your goodness, your mercy.
Jesus' name, to Jesus. That's all God is waiting for. While people are searching for something, and we already have the something, it's the name of Jesus. So, Father, I pray that as we get ready to partake of the word of God today, I ask you, Jesus, Jesus. to be the preacher let my words become your words. Let my voice become your voice. These are your people, and Father, you already know what they have need of. In your name, God, there's healing. If the end is sick, by the stripes of Jesus Christ, you are healed. Not only that, God, you are our peace. Pray that this morning that we would have peace in our mind, not just any kind of peace, the peace in, in spite of how I feel or what I'm going through, the peace to know that you're working it out for
touch me in such a way that I think it'll be a blessing to all of us. I, I want you to title this message, Seeing Life from God's Perspective. Seeing life from God's perspective. Amen. We, we've got to make sure that we're not seeing life from our own perspective. Amen. Amen. We see the now, but we don't see the end of it. So this scripture that I, I'm going to, to read, I, I want you just, if just out of respect for the word of God, to stand to your feet for a moment. I just want you to help me, and we're going to read this scripture because this is a scripture I think that would help us all see life from God's perspective. I want to see life how God wants me to see it. Uh, Mark 8, chapter 22 through 25. And it says, And he came to Bethsaida, and they bring a blind man unto him, and brought him to touch him. Somebody touch him, touch him. Brought a blind man, and, and, and besought him to touch him. And he took the blind man by the hand, and led him, somebody say, out of town, out of town. And when he had spit on his eyes, somebody say, uh oh, he spit on his eyes, and put his hands up on him, he asked him if he saw all. And he looked up and he said, I see men as trees walking. After that, he put his hand on him again, up on his eyes, and made him look up. Somebody say, look up, look up, look up. And he was restored and saw every man clearly. So just for a moment, for a moment, I, I want to just talk about seeing life from God's perspective. Take your seat. Probably have you out of here in about three hours. Amen. I can do this in three hours. Amen. <laughs> now, I, I just want to talk for a moment. Uh, there is a danger in the church that we don't talk about. Uh, we don't talk about becoming spiritually blinded. All right. And, 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 and Jesus said, uh, it's like having eyes but can't see. Yeah. It is possible with all of this spiritual stuff that we do in church and we jump and shout and we hear the word of God but we can become spiritually blinded. And, and because you are spiritually blinded you make decisions in the dark. Amen. Oh, I, I feel this. Oh, yes, I, I, you, you make decisions in the dark. You, you, you make decisions from your own perspective and not see it how God sees it. I want, I want to just take a moment to talk for a moment. We see our life from where we are right now. And we don't understand that God doesn't see our life from where we are now. He sees the end of it. And a lot of times we are asking God to remove stuff out of our life, but God said it needs to be a part of your life so you can see me clearly. And some of us, when we are spiritual blind, if you're not careful, you can become adjusted. You can become comfortable in being spiritually blinded. When I'm talking about spiritual blind, I'm talking about you making decisions with no light and no direction. You, you, you see everything through your own emotions, your own feelings. You see stuff the way that you want to see it. Are we becoming spiritual blinded? Anytime you can come to God's house and the word of God is being preached and you cannot leave a different way than you came, then maybe you are spiritually blinded. Amen. When you can only see the worst in people and you can't see the best in people, maybe you are spiritually blinded. So I want to ask you, can you see and are you seeing clearly? Because the dangerous thing that's happening in the church We've got blind people leading blind people. Woo, help me, Jesus. And, and, and that's a problem in the church. You're trying to tell me how to fix my life. You, you're trying to tell me how to deal with my kids. You're trying to tell me how to deal with my finances, and your stuff is all jacked up. 
I'm talking about spiritual blinded people who go around fun and act like they know what they're doing and know what they're doing and they're leaning to their own understanding. Yeah. And, and the dangerous thing that when you become spiritual blind, you get used to being there. So the question is, how long have you been like that? And why do you keep making decisions in the dark? Because the Bible says for you not to lean to your own understanding in all your ways and not as him. Do you know what gives you light? The word of God gives you light. And until you line your life up with the word of God, you always going to be in the dark. And when you're in the dark, you see stuff that's not there. And God does not want us to be spiritually blinded. We've got to make sure that we're seeing things in the proper perspective. And I've got to say it over and over. God has a plan for your life. It's bigger than your now. That's why the scriptures say, don't be weary in well doing. Because there's a time you can get weary. You've got to gird up in the truth of God. So again, how do I see life from God's perspective? And we've got too many people that are going around in circles and bumping against everything because they see, but they don't see clearly. I can see clearly now. The rain is gone. See, some of us, we have a foggy vision of life. And that's why my job is to preach to you because you got a devil. He wants you to see things the way you see it. He wants you to react the way you react and not react the way God wants you to react. Amen. See, when you're spiritual blind, you say stuff that God didn't tell you to say. We react because the Bible, if you really read the Bible, the Bible says if your adversary asks you to go one mile, you go be extra mile. Come on now. Are we really seeing the word of God? Do you really believe what God told you you can do? He says you can't do it, but you can do all things through me who will give you the strength. So again, are you spiritually blinded? Are you seeing life clearly? And just because you show up to church don't mean that you're not spiritually blinded. Because some of the people that show up in church are the most blinded people you ever want to see. They come to God's house and they don't know how to love nobody. They don't know how to root nobody on. Everything is from the way they see it. Amen. And if you're not careful, there's some things that can keep you spiritually blind. You know your past. Your past hurt. Your pain. The stuff that you don't deal with. That's why in counseling session, you see people sometimes in counseling session that you, you are 24, 44, 54, and you're still dealing with stuff that you have not dealt with because you won't face it. When you won't face it, you can't go spiritually blind. Yeah. So, so, so here, I don't plan to be long. Actually, they would say, can you see? Can you see? But not, not just can you see, but can you see clearly? Yes, Lord. <laughs> amen, amen. So, 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 so the question is, how do I deal with my spiritual body? When I read this scripture, it helps us. If you're going blind, don't panic, don't be nerved up, because I can help you today. In this scripture, everything it tells us how to deal with spiritual blindness in the church. And I'm so glad that you want to know. I'm so glad you got your pencils and paper. I'm going to tell you the first point is if you're going to deal with spiritual blindness, the first thing they did was tip the man to Jesus. Come on now. Oh, I felt that. Sandy, the first thing they did was take the man to Jesus. Notice this. They did take him to church. <laughs> yeah, y'all, I can't get no amen right there. Yeah, We're spending so much time taking people to church, but here, if you're going to deal with somebody in a spiritual blind place, you got to take them to Jesus. We can take them to church, but we don't take them to Jesus. It's right here in the scripture. And they took him 
to Jesus. And it's funny how we take people to church and not understand it that somebody say, I'm the church, I'm the church, I'm the church. And they come to church and not realizing that the church is messed up. Yeah. Oh, Y'all can't get no amens over here. <laughs> See, it depends on what Sunday you own. Is it your good Sunday or is it your messed up Sunday? Is it your unforgiveness week? See, you don't, you don't know where you are because of your emotions. We don't know what we're going to get in the church. That's why you don't bring them to the church because the church can be holy one moment and next moment they be doing something else. You've got to start bringing people to church. And we don't realize we're bringing them to church because you're not where you're supposed to be. You're bringing them to other churches and they look good on the outside and they can talk good on the outside, but they ain't living worth for nothing. They can't get you to Jesus because they don't know Jesus for themselves. We teach people to come to church. You know where to sit. You know what not to sit. You know what to do and not to do. You know what to sit, but you don't know how to be seated in Jesus. Wow. You, you don't know how to allow the spirit to sit you in a place to where you see life from a different perspective. And when you take them to Jesus, Jesus is not going to let you see it the way you see it. He's going to deal with the condition you're in. Yeah. And because we're not taking people to Jesus, we're taking them to the church, we find out that people are in conditions that God don't want them to be. Right. Somebody said, take them to Jesus, take them to Jesus. Yeah. Now listen, I want to help you today because the truth of it is you can understand that, that the church has problems too. And guess what? You don't want to bring them and drop them off the church because the church has had many problems too. When you bring them to Jesus, guess what? They don't have to come to the building. Do you know that people can meet Jesus in your house? Oh, y'all yeah. oh, yeah. oh, yeah, quiet now. Oh, yeah. the, the people can meet Jesus on your job, oh, yeah. in the bank, on the street. What, what, what would happen to the song? Uh, take the Lord Jesus with you wherever you go. You don't need What happened to this little light of mine? I'm going to let it shine. I'm going to let it shine in the bank. I'm going to let it shine in the school. I'm going to let it shine on the street. And that's what God is looking for. So if I'm going to deal with my spiritual blindness, I have to understand that we got to get people to Jesus. Stop just bringing people to church. Stop bringing people to people you are familiar with. Come on, come to my prayer. Come to my prayer circle. Yeah, your prayer circle might be good for you, but it might not be good for somebody else. Come on, come on, come on, come on. See the prophet. Come see. He, he, he might be good for you because see, you still are, are in your flesh, but it might not be good for somebody else. So we've got to learn, and I'm going to make sure I articulate this today. You, you have to take time, and when you're trying to get people to Jesus, you've got to make sure that you get them to Jesus, not just to a building. Don't just take them to any church because, guess what? we got some jacked up churches out there. Uh, uh, there's a way that seems right, but at the end, there's destruction. And I start off saying, how can you lead me? And you keep bumping your head. How can you pray for me? And see, the problem is, we're praying for people, and we ain't delivered ourselves. You see, but you don't see clearly. And I'm getting so sick and tired of, of just that when, when somebody just touches you because sometimes the spirit comes up you feel a feeling and you think it's time for you to start a ministry. Uh -huh. And not knowing that you're not where you need to be at yet. That's just a part of your process. Oh, I wish I had somebody up in here. Somebody said, teach me I'm, I'm trying to do the best that I can. So again, I'm going to harm this out. Stop Letting people tell you how to get to Jesus. Let me tell you something. He didn't do this about your performance. Come on now. When Jesus looks at you, he looks at your heart. Yes. We're performing, but, but because we're performing and we're really not connected to him, he said, I really don't even know you. Mm -hmm. So again, it's right here in the scripture. They bring him to Jesus. Now look at this here. 
And Jesus took him by the hand and led him out of town. My second point, if you're going to deal with your spiritual blindness, you've got to be willing to let Jesus lead you out of it. Oh, I felt it in my spirit. You've got to be willing to allow Jesus to lead you out of it. Because most of the time, when Jesus gets ready to heal you, he takes you from familiar people. Oh, y'all missed that. Y'all missed that. God, let's hurry up and come back. I can't wait till October the seventh Sunday so we can get our church back here. Because that guy said amen. When Jesus brings you out of something, yeah. he takes you by the hand and he leads you out of it. And the reason why he leads you out of it, he gets you away from the familiar voices. Some of you don't even know the voice of Jesus. He, he says, my sheep know my voice, and a stranger, they can't hear it. So you have to be willing to allow Jesus to lead you and guide you. Amen. He takes him out of a place. What is the place that Jesus is trying to take you out of so he can deal with your condition? Amen. Some of us don't even understand. As long as you're where you are, as long as you think like you are, as long as you stay in your emotions, Jesus cannot deal with your condition. And a lot of times, people like to stay around people with the same kind of condition. So all the sick folks, they stay together. Isn't it funny how crazy folks, they all get together. Birds of a feather, they all flock together. Mad people all get together. People who want to be seen all get together. People who want to dress, they all get together. And Jesus said, and for me to deal, wake up with the spiritual blindness, hmm. I've got to be willing to lead you out of it. What is that it? What is that it that you won't deal with? What is that it that's got you stuck? What is that it that's got you so mad? What is that it you keep responding to? Because long as you stay in that place, you can never see clearly. So my second point was he had to lead you out of it. Somebody said, out of it, out of it. <laughs> and then if I'm going to deal with my spiritual blindness, I've got to see from God's perspective. Because the Bible says he spits on his eyes. He spits and he touches his eye. And he said, look up. What do you see? And he is responded because now he's blind, but he goes from blind to now he can see something. And this is where most of us are. We, we go from being blind to we see something. He said, what do you see? He said, I see men walking like trees. And, and Jesus said, you can see, but you're not seeing clearly. That's not natural. What is that thing that when Jesus touched you, you can see better, but you can't see all the way clear? I got to be able to tell the difference between a tree and a man. I, I see, but I don't see clearly. How many of us in this church, we see, but we don't see clearly? <laughs> I don't see nothing. I'm in the dark. I go from darkness to seeing something that's not natural. Yeah. Mm -hmm. See, the, the reason why Jesus had to deal with that, because you'll be giving tree a glass of water. Wow. But you'll be chopping a man down. You got to be able to see it the way God sees it. And what God wants you to do, he wants you to see life from his perspective, not your perspective. You see the worst in somebody, and you don't even know that somebody that you see the worst with, when God gets through with them, they're going to be a blessing in your life. That's why you don't look down on nobody. You don't curse where you are right now. You give God a praise. Whatever condition he has you in, when God gets through with it, it's going to work for you. I know I'm preaching. God is trying to get you to see it. From his vantage point, he's trying to get you to see your life from his perspective. Mm -hmm. They said you ain't nothing. But God said, when I get through with that nothing, they said what nothing, I'm going to make something that's going to be a blessing to the world. Yeah. The 
strong that are rejected. And you don't even understand that God is getting ready to do something. But you got to see it from his eye. And that's why when you pray, you don't just pray, God bless me. Say, God, show me where I'm going from your perspective. Because you don't want to say, I don't want to go through. But God said, you need to go through. I wish I had somebody to give me a testimony in here. What you didn't want to go through, it hurt you, but it also blessed you too. See, some of us, if we can be honest about it, some of the pain that we've experienced in our life, that's what made us anointed. That's what made us find Jesus. That's what made us learn how not to lean to our own understanding, but to wait and trust in God. Somebody said, you had to go through that. Why are you crushing what you got to go through? You got to go through it to get your promotion. You got to go through it so you can be the head and not the tail. You got to go through it so you can be a voice in the last and evil day. So, so, so what God said is that you see, but you don't see naturally. And, 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 and you don't see naturally. You, you don't see clearly. And this is the dangerous part. I want you to put some notes right here. The most dangerous part of a Christian's life is when you start seeing something and you don't see it clearly. Don't make your ministry in the dark. Don't do it when you can't be focused. Because God said, some of us, we see, we got eyes, but we can't see it. Do you know what my prayer is for the palace of praise and for every member for you to see life the way God sees it? Don't call it, don't call something in when God says ain't do with it yet. Don't pronounce something dead when God says it's still alive. So, so, so what I'm trying to say is, are you seeing life from God's perspective? When you see life from God's perspective, you cannot have distractions in your life. Amen. See, sometimes when God wants you to see something, he'll tell you to turn some things off, turn the TV off, turn the radio off, and turn some people off. Get to a place where I can do for you what needs to be done for you. Because I don't want you to be a victim. I want you to be a victor. I want you to stand in the power of my glory. I want you to open up your mouth while they up there playing. I want them to know what the real anointing feels like and what it looks like. I want them to see some demons being cast out. I want them to see somebody who can lay hands on the sick and they can recover. I want somebody to holler, I'm not bitter, I got better. Oh, I feel like preaching, but I, I'm trying to calm down. But I wish I had somebody to look at somebody and say, I ain't bitter, I ain't bitter. It made me better. All my tears made me better. I saw me and walking in that tree, but I did not know that God was adjusting my focus. And what I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not over here with anybody. He said, I see men walking like trees. I want you to think about one situation that you've gone through. I want you to think about something, not something that's something good. I want something that's a painful experience, a traumatic experience that you've gone through. And I want to ask you, are you better? Are you whole now? Because it's a, it's a part of you can, can get a, a little touch and you think it's over and then something else happens, then it comes back up. You start to react and, and people don't even know why you're acting like that because you haven't dealt with the hurt and the pain and the process and everything that comes in your life. If anybody rubs you the wrong way, then you're going to fly it off because you can see what you can't see clearly. So if I'm going to, man, if I'm going to deal with it, I got to see it from God. Perspective. Somebody said from God's perspective. It's the way God sees it. Remember, you're looking from the beginning to the end. God already from the end, and He's coming back to get you to bring you to the end of it. See, He goes in your beginning and says, You right here, you stuck. Come on, I got something better for you. Allow God to process you into your greatness. I wish I had somebody. I don't need no amen there. Because John, I can look back over my life. There have been times I didn't see clearly, but I had to stop right where I was at and say, Lord, give me a second touch. And not with the first touch, but but I need a second touch because sometimes pain and hurt and disappointment can make you lose focus. Second thing, second thing, he said, you 
see. The third thing, you see, but you don't see clearly. And listen, what Jesus does. He does not leave you in a position of uncertainty. He doesn't let you see stuff that's not there. He doesn't let you live your life where you don't know what's real and not. He, 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 he tells him, what do you see? Then he touches him again. <laughs> see, some of you all don't want to ask Jesus to touch you because you don't want nobody to know that your vision has gone a little foggy. See, you heard the pain and all this stuff that causes it. Sometimes things people do to you can come. And sometimes things in the church can cause you to, I wish I had somebody. You got to be willing to open up your mouth and say, Lord, give me a second touch. Feel like preaching now. Somebody say a second touch. And John, when he gave him a second touch, he told him one thing, and we're going to bounce up out of here. Y'all said, Pastor, you did good today. You didn't hold us too long. You got straight to your points. He told him one thing. That I'm gonna tell all of y'all, and if y'all do this same thing, I'm telling you, you're gonna see life so much better. You're gonna see things, options gonna move out of your way if you just do this one thing. He told the man, Look up. <laughs> y'all missed it. John, I know you've been hurt. I know you're going through pain. I know they lied on you. I know what he did to you. I know she walked out on you. But Jesus said, in the midst of that, look up. I wish I had somebody. I wish I had somebody. Look over at a lady and say, neighbor, look up. What are you looking to? He said, don't look down. Don't look down at the people that hurt you. Look over it. I wish I had somebody. Look up to the hill that was coming. Your help. I need somebody to open up your mouth and say, My help comes from the Lord. He knows where he's going. I know where he's taking me. You need a second touch. Not the second touch. The second touch is the second touch when things fall off. It's the second touch when demons get past. Child of God, that no 
out of your mouth is what you're looking at. If you say you see a mess, then you're looking at the wrong thing. Because I, I, it can be a mess here, but I don't see the mess. I got my eyes on him. I see the mirror. You, 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 the sickness, they said, and I'm not saying being denied, but I'm not listening to what they said. I'm listening to what he said. We have to see life from God perspective. Do you understand how programmed God is to your life? Do you understand that everything concerns you, concerns you? Why do you think the Bible says, touch not my anointing? See, your job is not trying to tell people who you are. Your job is just to be who you are. And they see the Jesus who you are inside of you. And they say, don't mess with her. Don't mess with her. You're so busy trying to tell people your title. And Jesus said, I don't want them to know your title. I want them to know your God. Amen. I wish I had somebody up in here. Yeah. I'm teaching my son at a young age, don't conform to the world. Be ye transformed by the renewal of your what? Mind. When your mind is on God. When your mind is on God, you see stuff different. You react different. When things are off in your life, you don't just take that. You say, Lord, I need your help. I wish I had somebody here that ever had a problem that was bigger than you and nobody could figure it out. And you just prayed to God, say, God, give me some wisdom. And God gave me an answer to the problem. And he made you great in the situation because he knows he made you great. You were going to make him great. Say, please be patient with me. I know I got 
have some issues. I know some stuff still ain't right. But say, please, please be patient with me. And just hold your hand like this. Say, God, it ain't through yet. But God is through with me.
on his prison card, it said the only way he was coming out was if he died. And through all of that, he's out now. Yeah, that's a good cloud. But I said, they say you would never walk as a free man. You out now. And what God is looking for, I took an impossible situation and brought you out of it. How are you going to respond? Some of you have been hurt. And that's why I took time to make sure that you're looking at it from God's perspective. Man, listen, there are some things that I don't even understand. There's some things that hurt me to my core. Let me tell you something. I'm not somebody just up here just, just saying some stuff and, and just, I have to live this stuff. I don't want people to feel sorry, but man, I look at I look at my son this morning, you know, 14 years old, he's been driving. Y'all, he drove me all the way to church this morning. Amen. But, but I look at I look at this here, you know, you know, nobody would know the traumatic hurt that they feel losing a mama. He, he don't even know what a mama, I mean, he, he know what his grandmother feel like, but he don't know what his mama feel like. Yeah. See, some of us have been through stuff that was supposed to take us out. When I shed that casket, man, I can't tell you the pain. And the reason I'm telling you is because some of you have great testimonies, but you're not sharing your testimony. No. When I shed that casket, three years old, Six years old and, and eight years old. And man, now the two girls are in college. He's 14 and driving this. And I say, God, you still good. But the pain. And the reason why I'm bringing this up, because you can't get stuck in the why. Some of us are stuck in the why. Why did this happen to me? Why did you let this happen? And when you get stuck in the why, you can't see clearly. What is it that God has done for you? Are you ashamed? You mean to tell me God did all that for you and you don't give him no reverence for what he did? Come on. Some of you are suicidal. Other folks thought about it. They did it. But some kind of way, God didn't even let you do that. I wish I had somebody. Looking at it from God's perspective. If you don't hear nothing else from me, this is one sermon I want you to make sure you mark in your Tablets don't see life. Man, they don't see it from your perspective. Don't see it. Just, don't see it from your perspective. See it from God's perspective. I don't know. I don't know how this pandemic and people are dying. And so I was looking Friday night. I want somebody to get something to take out, and that was hundreds of people, hundreds of people, no mass, and it's like it's over. But I'm on the front row, and bodies are study coming in, study coming in, study coming in. Man, listen. See, if, if, if one thing I do know, there's a scripture that Jesus says in the Bible, the morning comes before destruction. The rich man said, let me go back and tell my brothers that hell is real. But listen what Jesus said. He said, even if one came from the dead, they still would believe. So again, let's look at life from God's perspective. Hands are lifted up. Chuck, just come say a little bit. You are the source of my strength. I just feel that.
I say these words. If you would just take a step out and look up, you'll have your answer. You're looking in the wrong direction. Your help comes from me. Your understanding comes from me. And God said to tell you today, if you just let go and let me deal with it. Stop trying to fix yourself because you'll never be able to fix yourself. I have plans for you. And the plans I have for you are good and not evil. Somebody's listening to the devil. Somebody is letting your past mistakes affect your future. Somebody needs confidence, and the confidence that you need is in you. Just gotta believe in you and believe in the God that's in you. We've got to let go. If you are struggling with the way you see things, if you can admit today that sometimes my emotions, sometimes my actions are getting the best of me. Sometimes it's I don't want to be like this. And when I say I don't want to be like, I end up being like that. I say what I'm not going to do. I say I don't want to do that. And I end up doing what I say. You're not alone because the apostle Paul did the same thing. Seeing it from God's perspective, Peter thought he was helping Jesus. And by helping Jesus, he was getting in the way of what Jesus was supposed to do. And Jesus had to tell Peter, get thee behind me, Satan. Peter, Satan desires to shift you. But when you are converted, you're going to be able to help somebody. So if that's you in this house today, if you're struggling in any way with the way you see something, if you have lack of confidence, if you feel like something is holding you back, I want you to just come to my left right here and just stand for a moment. I pray to God, if you can make that step. Thank you, brother. Thank you. Thank you. Don't wait on nobody else. Deliverance comes from those who make the move. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. I, I want you to stand right here. Be glad to minister to you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on. Come on. Come on. It's, 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 it's. Amanda, come on. Come on. Come on. It, it, it's the way you see it. God said to everyone that came to this altar, I'm going to let you see things the way I see them. And God said, what I see for your life is victory. I see peace and I see happiness and I see joy. So Father, I pray in the name of Jesus today your daughter, your sons have stepped out in obedience to your word. Now, Father, I pray that today that the peace of God would rest over their life. I bind everything that would come to hinder them to come to make their vision not clear. Father, I pray that, that you would open up their spiritual eyes, God, so they have faith to believe that you can do all things for them and for them and through them, God. So today, God, as I speak today, we give it all to you today. I don't want to spend another day when I'm smiling on the outside, when I'm crying on the inside. Today, God, Help us to be free. Father, I want to be free. I want to be happy. I want to live the life that you have for me. Remove, God, all the obstacles. Break every chain, God. Every generational curse. I don't want something that's coming down from generation to generation. Her mama was like that, and her mama was like that. Mama, Father, let it pray with me. I don't want to have something. I don't want to be fighting the devil that my daddy did not come from. I want to be free. free. Today, God, help me to speak it. Don't let me speak words that are not connected to you. Don't let me howl, howl. Don't let me say words that you didn't tell me to say. You told me to say it like you said it. I may not feel it, but I know that you are real, God. And I know if I put my trust in you, I can do this. So today, God, 
Let our sister hear it. Let her leave here in victory today. Thank you, God. Give her that second touch. Give her that second touch. As life grows in her, God, give her a touch, God. Help her, God, to walk in the steps that you ordered for her, God. I pray for every relationship. I pray for every part of our house, our being, our father, everything that it lines up with you, God. Thank you, Lord. And bless your son, God. Yes, sir. Bless your son, God. I pray in the name of Jesus, God. You know the feeling on the inside. Sometimes I'm feeling like I'm enough. Giving my all, but every time I give my all, I always get the short end of the stick. And God told me to speak to you, brother. He said, this is your year, but you won't come up short again. God's going to give you the victory that you desire. And it's not meant for men to be alone. God said, I'm going to give you happiness and peace and everything that you desire. God said, I'm going to give you the desire of your heart. Lord, do you have so much word that's over your life. And you have to wonder, how are you still standing? in spite of what you're going through. And God just told me to tell you, stand strong in my strength. It's my strength that you're standing in. And if you hold on to the promises, there are things that I'm shifting. I know things seem chaotic, they seem messed, but God said, I am doing something in your life. When I get through with everything, you're going to be happy, you're going to be full of peace. God said, stay right there. Not many days from now, there's going to be a shifting. If I be a man of God, the thorn that keeps coming up, God said, I'm going to remove the thorn. I'm going to remove the thorn. I'm going to let you see that every word that's ever been spoken over your life is going to come to pass. And God said, I'm doing this without people. I'm doing this with just me and you. And God said, your faith has came up to me. And God said, I'm going to answer faith. I don't answer tears. I'm answering faith. Just keep speaking what I said. Keep believing what I said. And you walk up in that. And even though it don't feel good, you speak the joy of the Lord. If I be a man of God, and I know I'm a man of God, your hands are going to pray some people through. Some people are going to get some things right before they transition here with you. Touch not my anointing. And God say, promotion is coming. Trina, just lift up your hands and get on your tiptoes. Get on your tiptoes. God said, that's why I want you to stay on your tiptoes. Because on your tiptoes, you're expecting something to happen. And God said, I'm going to move. You, you're, you're trying to get to it. You're on your tiptoes. God said, I'm going to visit your house. What the devil is trying to do for bad. God said, I'm going to bring favor. I'm going to bring increase. Where it just don't make no sense. God said, look at your life. Every time you thought it was a desert, did I not make a way? God said, I'm going to make ways out of no way. And God said, I'm waiting for you to give it all to me. Father, I pray it is done in the powerful name of Jesus Christ. Sister, I want to minister to you because when you were there praising God, God told me to tell you, he is shifting to a place in him. See, you know him, and you reverence him, and you love him, and you have a relationship with him. But this story of the blind man, God took him out of it and asked him, what do you see? And God said, until you see me, it's not the place. So today, God told me to tell you, he's getting ready to shift you. I see God shifting you in a whole different direction, in a position to where you can stand. There's beauty on the outside. Everybody's attracted to the beauty on the outside. But God said, inside of you, there is so 
much more. And that's why you always feel empty because you just are looking for somebody to connect with you in that place. I want you to touch your belly because you can't control it. It's like rivers of living water. It's the place where daddy wants you to be. It's the victory that daddy wants you to give. It's the blessing from your mama's womb. I'm shaking up on you. Oh, yeah, I love you. You are not just any woman. You are a woman of God. There are gifts inside of you. You are a dreamer of dreams. And God say, I'm going to use you to open up your mouth to the free and the clap that the things you've been holding back on. But God said, open up your mouth because you going to save somebody's life. Oh, my. Yes, Lord. I heard it. I heard it, God. I heard it, God. I heard it, God. I heard it, God. He said, this is a season in your life where I'm going to send people that you are not familiar with and they're going to help you because there's so much inside of you. There are people going to write checks for your vision and God saying, don't worry about it. I've already taken care of it. God 
Oh, you in so many ways. He gives you the desires of your heart. And I, I, I always don't want to talk to you from a natural point when we get home. I want to get in this atmosphere to where we can talk. God says that he wants you to represent him and the confidence that you need is confidence in him that he can do anything. He can use you to bring glory and honor to him. I want you to hear these words. God said, I, 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 I have a call on your life and I want you to start being a mouthpiece for me. I want you to start not just trying to get people to a church, to a building, but I want you to be the church right where they are. Your team, I want you to pray. I want you to be the one to pray. God, I want you to pray. And I, I want you to start telling them we're going to do this here. And God's going to be with us. And you start speaking. And God said, I'm going to use you. There's an anointing that your mother left. There's an anointing that, that God is going to shift into you. And God said, I'm going to shift that into you. And you're going to be a people's person. And God said, I am going to use you to bring glory. And God said, all I want you to do is never to be ashamed of me. Today, God said, I am going to give you confidence. I'm going to let you play for me. When they call your name, when they shout your name, when they jump up for you, I want you to always point back to me and give me the glory. And I want you to always reverence me. And God said, if you do these things, I'll make your name great. Can I trust you? That's the thing that God wants to know. Can I trust you? When they start trying to get you to do this and that, can I trust you to walk away? Can I trust you to witness to them. Now, Father, I pray in the name of Jesus. I want every one of you all to touch him one time. Just touch him. Touch him one time. Just touch him. Touch him. Touch him. Touch him. Father, in the name of Jesus, I lay hands on this man of God. I thank you, Father, that, Father, you touch him. Let him see, let him hear, and let him represent you, God. Today, Father, I pray that today that you would awaken the spirit man up. And I pray in the name of Jesus, his life will have an effect on so many people because he wants to bring glory and honor to you. Now, Father, I pray that as I impart the glory of God, all my life as I imparted it to him God, I pray for favor, I pray for increase, I pray that you would blow his mind God, I pray in the name of Jesus he will stand out and stand up for you, now Father I pray it be done this day, touch his body keep his body whole as he's developing to this great man of God I pray as he reads the scriptures and as he takes the scripture and work the word of God. God said, if you work the word, just work the word. Put me in remembrance that you know my words. And God said, when you remind me of my word, I'm going to release my promise. That is what God is speaking to your heart today. Today, God said, you're never alone. Never alone. And, and God said, for you to look up because in the clouds, in the clouds, I heard God just say, in the clouds, there are witnesses. There are witnesses. Your mama is your grandfather. There are witnesses that are rooting you on in the clouds. They're calling out your name. Now, Father, do it this day in the powerful name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Come on, give God a hand clap and pray. Uh, we're done, we're done.
Come on, let's get ready to get an offer, and then we'll get ready to go home. Facebook and into the palace. And listen, second Sunday in October, we're coming back in the building. Uh, we're getting ready to get back in the building. We're going to be social distant. I'm saying again, for those who are elderly, I'm not saying you need to come or you have to come because we're still going to be online. You pray. If God don't give you release, it's okay. So again, we're just going to open back up the house of God and uh, we're going to allow people to come in and we're going to social distance. We have some people in the in here, some people in the, in the other room. And we'll spread out. Uh, we even have some people outside speak outside. We'll, we'll do whatever we need to do to get us all back together. So again, let's be praying about it. Amen? Amen. Amen. So the second Sunday in October, make sure you write this on your calendars. We'll be back in the house of God, giving God glory and praise. Let's get ready to get an offering. He said, bring all the tithes to the storehouse. There might be resources in my house. And prove me and see what I've done. Open up the windows of heaven and pour you out blessings. You won't have room to receive. He promised to rebuke the devour for your sake. Now listen, the Bible said if you be faithful over the few things, God will make you ruler over many things. Now again, let's make sure we stay faithful in our giving. Even though there's a pandemic, i got to testify, I've been blessed, and God is blessing me. And I, I think it's a greatest shift because he said the weather the unjust is laid up for the just. Amen. He's laid up for the just. So you keep on believing and go out and conquer it. Amen. The violent take it by force. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Amen. So again, make sure you Put your offers in and make sure there are ways you can give. Text in church, PayPal, all of that. You can see it on the line, how to give. So make sure you give it unto the kingdom. Amen? Amen, amen. Amen. Come on. I mean, God is setting us up. He's setting us up. Amen. Amen, amen, amen. Somebody looking for a house. Amen. Go get your house. Amen. Amen. Come on, call. Whatever you need, you have a God who will supply all of your needs. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Father, we pray your blessings on the offerings. Father, I pray for the least, the greatest, those who are giving online. I pray over your offerings. Now, Father, I pray that you would just blow our minds today. Now, Father, these are your people. Now, Father, bless us, even the ones who want to give and had it not. Let the mirror barrels overflow through you. Now, Father, we thank you that you always supply all of our needs. No lack in our life because we serve a God who owns everything. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Come on, our announcements are coming at this time. Amen. Amen. There's the evidence coming from our announcements. Hi, everyone. Good morning. Good afternoon. Our palace announcements are as follows. We have virtual worship every Sunday. Palace of Praise Church, Spring, Texas is at 10 o'clock. Cleveland, Cleveland, Texas is at 12 o'clock. Also join us on Wednesdays for online prayer and Bible study starting at 7 o'clock p.m. Also, as a reminder, we do rebroadcast our services on YouTube. Our YouTube page is Pop Palace Nation. We also encourage your family and friends and our palace family to continue to be faithful in our giving during this time. There are four ways you can give online giving. Text GIVE to 281-688-6011, PayPal, paypal.me backslash praise121, also cash out, dollar sign pop palace nation, and then by mail at the palace business office, 117 West Hamilton, Spring, Texas, 77076. Also, if you need prayer, we invite you to join us for prayer every Monday through Saturday morning. The prayer call begins at 6 o'clock a.m. and details are on our Facebook page. Each Tuesday, Thursday at noon, we have Noonday Prayer via Facebook Live with our very own pastor, William Freelo and Lady Freelo. And also each Thursday night, our campus pastors in Cleveland, they host Thursday night prayer at 8 o'clock a.m. p.m. on Facebook as well. Also to receive the latest information and stay connected to what's going on at the palace, text the word MEMBER to 281-688-2268. And these have been our morning announcements. And Pastor McDuffie, he did officially make the announcement that we are returning to services, our public services, on our, the second Sunday in October. Amen. So you all have a great and blessed week. Oh, but he wants me to talk about school. Okay, I can talk about school all day. So there are many things going on at school, as we all know, right? Um, first thing, your children are, they're either doing virtual learning or online learning, right? A couple of things, there are pros and cons to both. For, first, being online, the kids can somewhat work on their own pace, but there's a lot of responsibility that, that comes with having the kids work online. First and foremost, they need a procedure. They need some sort of system where you get them up in the morning, you feed them breakfast, before school starts online. They shouldn't be eating cereal, trying to get ready to learn, amen? Amen, amen. we take care of that stuff before we start, right? The other thing I caution you about with online learning, and I know this because it happened in my house, is ensuring that the kids are doing their own work and not sharing work, because that will catch up with them eventually, amen? On campus learning, so the kids, the teachers, principals, staff, they're doing a great job with organizing things at school so that the kids are being socially distant. Um, one main thing that the, the schools and districts, of course, want the kids to do is to follow the safety and procedures and such that they've outlined, which is wearing your mask, right? Um, also washing hands. And for the younger ones, they do have these lanyards that you can attach to both ends of the mask. And so it's kind of like, you know, a lanyard for your glasses. So whenever you want to put your mask on, you can put it on, take it off. And so that's one thing that we're recommending for the younger kids so that they can keep their mask on, all right? The other thing, of course, is prayer. Oh my God. Prayer, Sister Nicole, prayer, prayer, prayer. It's difficult. It's difficult to be on both sides, with all three, in all three positions. It's difficult to be an administrator, principal, and a teacher. It's difficult to um, be a student in these times, and it's also difficult to be a parent. But one thing that we all need to understand is we all have the same goal. 
no matter what seat you're sitting in, our goal is the same. And that is for our children to learn, for them to become productive citizens. Amen. Right? Amen? Amen? All right, so with that said, thank you, Pastor. I appreciate that. Amen. Amen. Again, don't let your kids come downstairs in their boxes and all that they white beaters trying to learn on TV. Amen. Come on, let's step to our feet. Let's step to our feet. I ain't gonna call them no names. I ain't gonna call them no names. Daddy God, we thank you for this service today. I thank you for the word you've given us today. Help us to see life from your perspective, God. We know in the end we win in you, God. Now, Father, we leave the building, but never from your face goes over the dangerous highways and byways, bring us back to the appointed time. We thank you for sending souls from the north, south, east, west, and nation, from the building. People never tell me. I always tell them the news of Jesus Christ. You can trust in every soul. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a wonderful, 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 blessed day. Amen. Amen. Amen.